This is the Dave and Checky Show. We got this groovy podcast for ya. Reviewing crazy tunes or quoting Twain and Sting and Dune. We'll bring ideas to share like bonus points for extra flair. Cause it's the freaking Dave and Checky Show. Checky show, we're bringing you this groovy review. We might preview movies, bake some bread, or drink some smoothies. So come on, have way too much caffeine. You roll up some rivers, I'll reference some Raffi. This is the Dave and Checky show. Hey, uh, excuse me, sir. Can I interest you in a timeshare? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of Dave and Checky's. Groovy poop tube. Oh, it's not that. The middle-aged cool kids super terrific podcast featuring your pals. Clarence and Kavanaugh. All right. Is that a person? Clarence M. Kavanaugh. He's an amazing baritone sax player. Just happens to have two names that are shunned right now. So he's not getting any work. He's about as optimistic as a trombone player with a beaver. <laughs> okay, first of all, I am shunning neither Clarence nor Kavanaugh. A trombone player with a beeper. Get it? Because no one hires a trombone player. Really? I, I'd hire a trombone player, you I fucking bozos. Who does a trombone? Why do you think no one hires a trombone player? I don't know. That, you know, it's, it's a musician's joke. What's the, what do you call an optimist? Yeah. I don't know, someone who fixes your eyes and gives you glasses? Okay. Yeah. What do you call an apologetic ophthalmologist? I don't, is this a joke you made up? Well, of course. Okay. That's the brilliance of it. I don't write this stuff down. I'm not some sort of stand-up comedian uh-huh. who does the same routine over and over again. Okay. What's the? Was there a punchline? Uh... The punchline is the joke. The setup is the punchline. That's the brilliance of my joke. Isn't this is not traditional? I'm like an alt comic. Oh, okay. And I swear that you might have raped me. What? I don't know. All right. Isn't that what alt comics say these days? All comics or alt, alt comics? Alt comics. Like, yes. you know, alternative female comics. They're not comics, though. They're just women who call themselves comics and then say nothing funny. Let's go out and have a beer and then maybe you can rape me. All right. Anyway, uh, today's episode is about conspiracies, unsolved mysteries, and deep, dark secrets. I love that guy. Which guy is that? You know the guy. He right. was he used to be on TV. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> he was old and gray and pasty. He had a show that sounded like something you just described. Unsolved mysteries? Yes, that's the one. Well, who was he? That pasty motherfucker. All right. Pastier than the dude from SVU. What dude from SVU? I don't know. Who's that red-haired pasty guy? He wasn't on SVU. But well, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I do because well, I've been married he? to you for 20 who years. Who is he? Let's tell the people who the red-haired pasty guy is. And he's not someone you don't know. The first things first, All shall right. we? Well, let's just back this up. Robert Stack, I believe, is who you were talking about for Unsolved Mysteries. That guy was a creep. Why do you think he was a creep? I don't know. He had a creepy vibe. He was like Kirk Douglas, like with some some hidden shit in his closet or something. I'm just saying, I I have a feeling he filled his crawl space with lime one time too many. All right. Well, I I have no feelings uh, about Robert Stack. At all. Wait, Robert Stack? Who does that sound like? Isn't there a serial killer that sounds like that name? Speck? Richard Richard Speck Speck and Robert Stack. That's what I was thinking of. Never mind. Robert, never. The other first guy's fine. The second person you were speaking about, the pasty redheaded guy, would be David Caruso. And he was a serial killer. No, he was in. A serial bad actor. He, no. He's a good actor. 
I think he he was in a show. Uh, I forget what the a show was. Show. NYPD Blue, I think it was, with Dennis Franz. You're telling me that he wasn't on Special Victims Unit or something, Miami, one of those shows? He was on one of those shows, but it was not Special Victims Unit Miami. It was... Okay, all right. But I, okay, yeah, we're on the same page. Whatever that is. We're always on the same page. He started off in, I believe, like I said, let me find it. Uh, We're on the same page, but the book is nowhere to be Hill Street Blues. He was in Hill Street Blues. He was on Hill Street. I'm a big fan of Hill Street Blues, and I got to tell you, I don't remember him from Hill Street Blues. He was in Hill Street Blues from 1981 to 1983. Who the hell was he? He was a character named Shamrock. Shamrock. Oh, I don't remember him. But he must have looked different. Mostly he was one from NYPD Blue in 93 to 94, and his uh, star rose meteorically. Now, am I mistaken that NYPD Blue is, co- is created by the same guy? Is, is it, it Steven Bochco? Bacco. Bacco? Bochco. Bacho. Bacco. Okay. Anyway, and then Not he Dick went. Wolf. Okay. Anyway, huh? then he went on to be uh, in the CSI Miami. Gotcha. All right. Today's show is about conspiracies. Wait, I got one more mystery. question for you. Okay. Was Dennis Franz in NYPD Blue? Dennis Franz was in NYPD Blue. Oh my God! And then also in Hill Street Blues. Okay. Well, what is this? Uh, who? What is this guy just got to work with the same people over and over again in the same kind of show? So if it if it if it's working, why would you fix it? I don't know. All Have right. you looked at Dennis Franz? That guy is a creep. I I don't know that to be true. I've not heard anything similar to that. And it's Bochco, B O C H C O. Bochco. All right. Today's episode is about conspiracies. Unsolved Mysteries, and Deep Dark Secrets. Which would you like to do first? Deep Dark Secrets. All right. Deep Dark Secrets first. This started for me back in November of 2017. Uh, There is a website that I frequent called crazydaysandnights.net. And what they do is they have um, what's called blind items. Uh, items about people, uh, famous people, famous people, actors, singers, celebrities, let's put it that way. So whatever they're a celebrity for, whatever they're famous for, uh, a lot of times they have deep, dark secrets. So let me read to you a little bit. Every Thanksgiving, as families and friends gather together to enjoy a meal, while others get ready for shopping and others help out with meals and hope at homeless shelters and charities, some people recall another Thanksgiving from decades past. A November that one rock legend spent drugging and raping young girls. Now, that's how it starts, and it's a rather lengthy post. Um... Suffice it to say that a very famous rock star called up a, fav- a very famous madam at the time uh, on no- November 20th, say 1980, and requested his favorite, which was an underage girl. Heidi Fleiss? No. This is before Heidi Fleiss. So uh, madams have been uh, pretty useful, I guess, in... L.A., Hollywood for a very long time. So, this rocker asked for a young lady, an underage girl. The madam hooked him up with an underage girl who was new to California, uh, had come from, like, an abusive home, and, uh, you know, just gotten off the bus, basically. The little girl was scared. She, of course, had heard of the rocker, but she uh, wanted to bring a friend. And so the guy said, sure, I don't care. So the madam was happy because she got to send two underage girls to his house and get paid twice. The friend was 15. The original girl, 16. The friend, 15. On arrival, the girls were fed cocaine to get them excited and quaaludes to keep them calm. 
They smoked a lot of pot, and after a dip in the jacuzzi with the rocker, they all three headed to the bedroom. The entire time, the rocker kept asking the girls to do things to each other, which neither had done before. They figured maybe if they did each other, he wouldn't do them. They were hesitant and scared, and the rocker got more and more violent. He kept taking Polaroid pictures of them all, doing everything, which embarrassed the girls. The 16-year-old asked to leave. The rocker told them they couldn't because they'd be arrested, and it was too late to call a cab. He pushed more and more drugs on them. Eventually, one of the girls passed out, and the rocker began raping her. Uh, the other girl was scared and was, was trying to hide, but the girl that was, had passed out had also started convulsing. So she was passed out and having convulsions. The rocker called his manager, who then called the paramedics. Everybody showed up at the house. Men in suits, paramedics. Um, the girls got taken out. And the rocker was arrested briefly and then let go and was only charged with... Uh, I think it was contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Fast forward a year, one of the girls kills herself. Fast forward 18 years, the other girl grabs some of those Polaroids before she left and is in the middle of writing a tell-all book and uh, apparently will be publishing the Polaroids as well. She is currently married to a some sort of I don't know if it's a senator a congressman someone in government in California and uh, the story is set to come out very very soon now do you have any idea who the rocker may be well I know who it is how, do well, my, you, I got a few problems here I don't know what, what you want me to say exactly how do you know who it is because I said it uh, I think we might have talked about this months ago let me just uh, tell our audience, the rocker is Don Henley of the Eagles. Yeah, I got one problem. All right. Who in their right mind would ever refer to Don Henley as a rocker? <laughs> Whoever wrote The Blind referred to him as rocker. If they mean an old man who sits in a rocking chair, yes. This is... He's not a rocker. I, and... Okay. What do you mean, fed them cocaine? You, you bother to say that they smoked pot? What, I'm supposed to believe that he, they ate cocaine? No. Why would you bother to spe uh, specify that they smoked pot? Why wouldn't you say fed them pot? Fed them cocaine. Okay. So, so your you're problem is with the, the way this the blind item is written. The 15-year-old never did this to each other. How do we know that they've never experimented with each other? Who says? Because they... Whose word is this? Okay. I'm just saying, this has all the inklings of a uh, hashtag me too fucking thing. Yeah, only it happened in 1980. I know. That's what I'm saying. Maybe Judge Kavanaugh and Don Henry. Drummer arrested form a on band. drug charges by Kurt Loader from 1980. Eagles drummer Don Henley was arrested at his home in Los Angeles on November 21st and booked for allegedly furnishing cocaine to a minor. Right. Henley, 33, Good. had we'll called see. local paramedics <clears throat> that morning to come to his house on Mulholland Drive in the exclusive Sherman Oaks section. Okay, so I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm it just saying the description happened. of it, it leaves, so there's a lot of, they're tying a lot of loose ends together here. I don't think for, that's okay, true. Tell, I can't imagine. What, okay. where, where did this happen? L.A.? You can't get a cab 24 hours a day in L.A. He told the little girls they couldn't. Well, that's not true. Of course it's not true. That, you have a problem with that? Yeah, see, he's a liar. Yeah, he's an, an asshole. No, I'm just kidding. What I'm saying is All right. uh, I, I believe that this happened. When the medics arrived, they found a nude 16-year-old girl who claimed she had overdosed on cocaine and According quaaludes. According to who? Who said After this? treating the... <clears throat> After treating the girl who required no hospitalization, they alerted the Los Angeles Police Department's Juvenile Division, which dispatched detectives from its sexually exploited child unit to Henley's house with a search warrant. The detectives found another girl on the premises, this one 15 years old, and also allegedly turned up on a cachet of drugs, 21 grams of cocaine, 5 ounces of marijuana, and an unspecified amount of quaaludes. 
Both girls were arrested, the 16-year-old on a prostitution charge and the 15-year-old for being under the influence of drugs. Henley spent the night in jail, but was released the next morning on $5,000 bail. Two underage girls, both naked, mm-hmm. with drugs in their system from him, and he's released on $5,000 bail. An why, Eagle uh, spokesman at Frontline Management in L.A. Why is he registered as a sex offender? No comment on the case. Why isn't he registered as a sex offender? Maybe there was no sex offender registration in 1980, or maybe because he was famous. All right, so look, this is the thing. Yeah. This is this is not a conspiracy. This happened. I said this oh. was a deep, dark secret. Oh, see? That's what I'm talking about. This isn't a conspiracy. This is a deep, dark secret. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. I, I asked you which one you wanted first. Which one did I want first? Deep, dark secrets. Yeah, that's why I wish you'd come up with a deep, dark secret and not a deep, dark secret. All right. Also, we had to talk about how you weren't going to shit on my choices. I'm not shitting on your choices. This is a great choice. I just don't uh, know how you can feed someone cocaine. Dave, it's a it's 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 just a figure of speech. I it's, know, but the, the not, figures of figure of speeches then become uh, reality in a history book. Anyway, uh, the people that came, the rocker, his manager, and the other men in suits all stayed behind when the girls were taken to the hospital. So Irving A. is off, and who's the other people? I believe it's uh, the rocker, of course, Don Henley, Ir- Irving Azoff, and I believe uh, Geffen had something to do with all of this. Um, back to the blind, it says, what none of them knew at the time was that the 15-year-old had managed to grab several of the Polaroids and stuff them into her clothes. At the time, she was petrified of the cops or her parents finding out, and the proof of her activity was all there in those Polaroids. So she grabbed them when the others were distracted to destroy them later. But she never destroyed them. She has them now, and uh, apparently there's a book coming out. I don't doubt it. And... uh, so that's a deep, dark secret. And honestly, I, I uh, looked up the Don, uh, you know, the Don Henley thing because you would think the Don Henley story because you would think that there would be a good amount of stuff out there on the Internet about it. There is not. There is not. And uh, this is the power of uh, Irving Azoff, you know. Scrub the internet of this. It, we, we've got underage girls. We've got drugs. We've and the underage girls are naked. They were. He was raping one of them who was passed out, and who was going into seizures, and he didn't care. And still scrubbed from the internet. Five thousand dollars bail. So, uh, and then there was a news anchor in L.A. who uh, tried to keep the story alive and tried to keep reporting on it. One news anchor went public running stories about the situation. She was hounded from her job several years later. Her attempt to uncover the truth in the case gave way to the rocker feeling like he was the victim, like he was the one being maligned and unfairly punished. Ha ha, dirty laundry. There you go. Absolutely. So, uh, all tied up and hopefully this uh book will come out and we will learn the truth of it uh pictures will will prove it to me the photos uh the par- the polaroids will just be inconclusive or conclusive proof why wouldn't she have come up with this already what the fuck is she waiting for that i don't know i mean look uh there's people sometimes they don't want to come out because they're embarrassed but I think she's at an age where, I mean, she was 15 in 1980, so 35 in 2000, 45. She's almost 55. Now she's just like, fuck it. I mean, there's shit that happened to me when I was younger that I've never talked about, but maybe in a few years I'll be ready to say something. I don't know. I don't know. It's not, uh, it's not up to me. All right. That was our dirty little secret. 
No, deep dark secret. Next we have unsolved mysteries or conspiracy theories. Which would you like next? Unsolved mystery. What? Unsolved mystery. Unsolved mystery. Unsolved mystery. All right. Let me play you a little bit of this. On the 27th of January 2001, this unusual message was posted on an online forum post to post. Greetings, I am a time traveller from the year 2036. I am on my way home after getting an IBM 5100 computer system from the year 1975. My time machine is a stationary mass temporal displacement unit manufactured by General Electric. The unit is powered by two top-spin dual-positive singularities that produce a standard offset Tipler sinusoid. I will be happy to post pictures of the unit. The poster's name was John Titor, a man who described himself as an American soldier from the future. The reason for travelling back in time, he stated, was to retrieve an old computer which contained a component of vital importance to the future. John Titor. Uh, he, in 1998, it is said that he sent Art Bell two faxes. And I don't know that Art Bell ever uh, referenced them or spoke of them or admitted to getting them. Um, I'm going to assume this man sent two faxes and, uh, and that, that part of the legend is true. I have gone back in the way back machine to find his original posts and it is exactly as was just stated uh, by the young lady in the John Titor, the time traveler documentary. He claimed to be a time traveler from 2036, uh, which is not that far away right now and certainly wasn't ridiculously far away from when... Uh, when this first happened in 2000, his first post, I believe was when to, in 2000, um, he claimed that there had been a nuclear war, <clears throat> that it was a civil war and that America had been divided and that there was a civil war and, uh, that Russia came in and nuked America for which people were very happy um, and that uh, things were way different now. In 2036, things were different. Family meant more. Religion meant more. Um, people used their hands to build things more. You know, there was a lot of... Uh, while they had a time machine, they didn't have a lot of the luxuries that we have now. They went back to using hand tools and typewriters and whatnot. Not 100%. So John Titor, and there's people that say, look, he, uh, he was right about some stuff. You know, he talked about um, watching DVDs. He talked about his some... Physicist, physicist stuff that I don't know about. But he said that CERN had uh, made some sort of discovery and that th uh, the time machine that he had, it wasn't a perfect science. And so what would happen was he believed in multiverse. So he was in 2036, was an army guy, 38. So he was born in 1998, he claims. He went back to 1975 to grab a computer, uh, an, an IBM 5150 or a 5110. And um, though sometimes he says 5100 and sometimes he says 5110, uh, there's no real difference between the two. So, um, and then he said he stopped back in 2000 for personal reasons. I don't know that he ever said what those personal reasons were, but he was living, or not living, but staying with his mother and father and his young self in Florida. And uh, he was all over the message boards. Uh, he 
claimed that there was uh, something about people really latched on to something he said that was foreshadowing of 9-11. But of course, a lot of time travel is claim that they can't really tell you too much because they don't want to affect your timeline. But the interesting thing about this guy also said the further back or forward you would uh, travel, the, the more divergent the timeline became. So if he, if he traveled back to yesterday, it would be an exact duplicate of yesterday. But if you traveled back 30 years, then there could be a 2 or 3% difference, and that 2 or 3% difference could make all the difference, really. Have you heard of John Titor? Mm, I don't think so. What do you think about time travel? I think it's a good way to uh, get out of a lack of a plot or uh, script uh, control. I think it's a good way to uh, get a movie finished. I also want to know, John Titor. Mm -hmm. T-I-T-O-R. Well, where uh, where are these Titors? Where's the family? Let's look into them. Is this a made-up name? If it's a made-up name, what else is made up? I uh, I don't know if the name was made up, but he uh, I, he was staying with his mother and father and him his young self in Florida, and at some point someone did trace his IP address, and it was to Kissimmee, Florida. But yeah, but I'm just saying, is there any proof of a Tidor family? I don't know that he used their real name, but in 2009, a woman named K Tidor requested that the letter from John Titor be posted in November of 2009. So I guess she held on to it. He went back to wherever he went back to. And uh, she had the letter posted on YouTube. Greetings. I am the man you know as John Titor. Correction, I am one of the men you know as John. In 1999... I was the second to arrive on the same world line as the other man you know as John. It was I who wrote the posts in November and January. When I return to 2001, I will write for the final time in March. My mother will release this message to you in November of 2009. The letter gets a a little odd. It starts explaining that there were two John Titors here at the same time and he's not including the younger one, that he went back and then another one went back. And that they uh, they have met each other and they've both gone back to the future, I guess. And there is still a website, johnteterfoundation.com. From, it's been there since 2001. And on it, it has uh, notes and numbers for the each of the two Johns. I suspect those uh, numbers are supposed to be uh, divergence percentages, or maybe something else entirely. But uh, there, it's it's just a plain website, JohnTeterFoundation.com, supposedly put up by. Um, the Teeter family's attorneys. Now, some people claim that the Teeter's family uh, attorney is the perpetrator of the John Teeter hoax. Who was the attorney? Larry Haber. Larry Haber, that sounds familiar. Now, I would say, okay, but to what end? To what end would somebody do this kind of hoax? What it, there's been no wait, Larry Haber. Yeah. Well, he's a Jew. I see. I yeah. see. That's a, he's a scheming. He's he's out for he's he's uh he's, he's got a side hustle on. He's probably got ten or eleven things going. Trying to one thing hits, he's making this is to make money. But I'm I don't know that anyone has made no, money. This is insanity. This is like some lunatic writing a uh, science fiction novel, and it just happens to turn into the religion that some you know millions of people pick up on. Yeah, this is uh, Haber, Larry Haber. Larry, well, that's oh boy. If he's not the neighbor on Three's Company, we got a problem. From Reddit, 
There is a time travel uh, subreddit on Reddit, and there's also a John Titor subreddit on Reddit. Larry, you've got some explaining to do. Kafki, the moderator of the time travel subreddit, says this. John Teeter was a hoax. The 1998 Teeter and then 2000 Teeter were probably two different people. The two, so the, the guy who sent the faxes to Art Bell and the guy who posted in the forums, he's saying, were probably two different people. The 2000 Teeter was actually Larry Haber, entertainment lawyer, and his brother, John Rick Haber, computer expert. It's the same people who set up the John Teeter Foundation and released the book. That said, John Teeter definitely knew his shit, made several accurate predictions due to being in the field and knowing advanced topics, but obviously got the far future predictions completely wrong. You can see that there's no, there's no obvious civil war that appeared by 2008, and by 2015 you'll see there's no World War III. Up until now, there's been no confirmed cases of time travel either. John Teeter was the closest, but it's all been, but it's been all but proven that he is a hoax. Fun story, though, and although it has been proven otherwise, all his posts were extremely accurate, physics and time-wise. Well, all right. I, I tend to believe what you just said. Kafki, the moderator of Time Travel subreddit on Reddit. I've always been a huge fan of Kafki's works. Okay, good for you. So I, I think it's... Franz uh, Kafki. I think it's fun, and I will post links to all of the um, old forums that you can... Uh, the, the chat, there's a chat room logs and uh, from 2000 and there's forum posts from 2001 and they're all fascinating. And if, if uh, it is this guy, Larry and his brother, um, I'm not sure that they made any money from this, but it was pretty, um, pretty complex. They, they did, like this guy said, they knew their shit. He knew about CERN. He, uh, someone said, well, he said he watched something on DVD in 2012, and DVDs weren't that popular in 2000. Yeah, but they were out. They were definitely out, because we had a TV, DVD player in 1999. Yeah. So at this point in 1998, uh, he's saying he was born, so he would be, John Teeter would be 20 right now in in our timeline. Mm. So maybe he's out there. Maybe well, he's uh, he's going to come forward. Hopefully he'll come up with a, a, a spectacular rap song. Then he can run for Congress. All right. Well, there oh, you that's go. that's Antonio Delgado. Never mind. <clears throat> but seriously, how about that mug with the uh, big hole in his backyard that the army came and took over? You think that happened? Oh, uh, what's so this? Speaking about Art Bell. Motherfucker got a hole in the backyard. Goes down to the depths of hell. Up, it comes out and back a property of Art Bell. I think it's Mel's hole or something. Yes. Hey Mel, your your property is on the verge of hell. Go tell Al Bell. Oh well. Mel's hole. Ew. Mel's hole is, according to an urban legend, an allegedly bottomless pit near Ellensburg, Washington. Claims about it were first made on the radio show Coast to Coast AM by a guest calling himself Mel Waters. Later investigation revealed no such person was listed as residing in that area and no credible evidence that the hole exists. But, you know, uh, how do we know? I don't know. How do we know? It seems plausible at the time. Mel's hole. Oh, Mel's hole. That uh, Art Bell uh, brought a lot to the paranormal and unsolved mystery and conspiracy theory table. Speaking of conspiracy theories. I got a, I got a show for you. It's oh. a topless uh, ghost hunters. It's called Paranormal Tits. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Paranormal Tits. Topless, topless ghost Just hunters. a bunch of average ghost hunters. Topless. Paranormal Tits. Okay. <laughs> Come on. This works. Dad jokes. This is not a dad joke. This is just a joke. And then, you know, people didn't you who aren't hip think it's for da dad bod. It's just called skin. All right. Well, maybe our next show will be all about paranormal tits. That is the shit right there, man. Okay. You're out of your goddamn mind. So uh, now on to the conspiracy theory. 
Um, what do you? What is in your mind? What is a conspiracy theory? A uh, conspiracy theory, in my mind, is uh, traditionally something that is probably not true. Really? Yeah, that's how I would initially approach it. I always thought that uh, conspiracy theories always had so many holes in them that they were just not true. All right. What about, uh, say, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, not the lone shooter? I believe that's probably true, but I would call that a conspiracy theory. Why wouldn't you? I, that's, I mean, that's when people think conspiracy theory, I think that's probably one of the top ones, Kennedy's oh, assassination. I know, but that, that's, 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 I don't know. Well, I, I guess, uh, what are you conspiring against? The government? No, I mean, that's, I feel like conspiracy theory has, uh, has I don't know, I think it's taken on a, a bad connotation. Like somehow it's conspiracy theory equals crazy. Even though I don't, I yeah, don't think that totally, way. Yeah. In my, yeah, yeah, exactly. Conspiracy, the, uh, consp conspiracy theory is like that movie with Mel, uh, Mel Gibson. Conspiracy. Yeah. Yes. That's the classic person who's a conspiracy theorist. They're, they're above average intelligence and they're fucking out to lunch. But in the end, at the end of that movie, spoiler alert, yeah, 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 yeah. he was a hundred percent right. That's how that movie ends. Rocky wins this one. Rocky wins this one. I hate to spoil it for you, kid. So right now, there is a modern day theory going on about this person named Q Anon. Have you ever heard of Q or Q Anon? Q Anon. That sounds like a weird Asian guy. Okay, so that means you have not heard of Q Anon. I've heard of him. All right. Them. I've heard of it. All right, let me uh, play a little bit from Lionel for you. Oh, Lionel, one of the best. So number one, Q is not a conspiracy theory by definition. I am not a conspiracy theory. You are not a conspiracy theory. This microphone is not a conspiracy theory. It doesn't make any sense. But they're saying that Q and non-believers claim that a series of cryptic clues, sometimes they are, posted to internet forums, 4chan and 8chan, 8chan right now, are coming from apparently a high-level Trump administration insider. And, and, and this is very, very good because, yeah, so far, yeah, insider, describing a world where Trump has teamed up with the military, well, not really military, but maybe military intel, but okay, I'm going along with it, to take on a global cabal of powerful elites, celebrities, and pedophiles. That is exactly correct. So Q is, uh, Q started posting on 4chan. Do you know what 4chan is? Uh, mm, 4chan. Uh, that's when the guitar player from Blues Traveler breaks two strings and sounds better than he did with his full set. No, that's Chan Kinsla, a different kind of Chan. Four you know why it sound better with four instead of six? That's two less strings to ring uncontrollably when he's soloing. Okay. 4chan is a message board. Plain and simple. Just a message board. It's a, uh, it's a free speech message board. or It was a free speech message board that has been around forever. Uh, similar to, remember Jen May? Uh, yes. Similar to that, just uh, crazier. Insane gotcha. and um, way, way better staying power. Uh, the guy who owned 4chan sold it eventually. Um, I forget what his name was. Um, How do you spell that 4chan? The number 4, C-H-A-N, 4chan. What, what's that supposed to mean? Anyway, so he sold it and uh, a group of kids then kids people went and made their own chan eight chan infinity chan uh so what happened was that q started vo uh posting on 4chan and i think he he got banned from 4chan and he went to 8chan now that is uh there are a lot of q people out there so don't hold me to it but that is what i think happened 
for whatever reason, the truth of the matter is he went from 4chan to 8chan. That is the truth of it. So on 8chan, he posts, uh, he posts messages that are sometimes vague, sometimes specific, uh, very cryptic. And he's been doing this for maybe a year in October, I believe. And, uh, what well, he's got a little check mark. He's verified. Uh, you don't get verified on. How 8chan. do we know it's him? Uh, well, on eight Chan, it's all anonymous, but he has gone through the trouble of, uh, securing um the same login every time all right so, so it's all, you always know it's him and so there's the a possibility that this lunatic is under 25 years old doesn't bother you at all does it bother me yeah so you're saying that before we even read anything that you think this that q might be a larp i think i think he's full of shit i think anything he happens to hit on is by coincidence stuff that he looked up and then is spreading through his own bullshit i also think that when you hide behind the fucking q anon thing why don't you just go outside with a faux guy, guy faux mask and fucking stab someone okay you're a fake fuck come on what is this let me give you a little bit more background information Q claims to be within the Trump administration, which he is, is not why he absolute bullshit. Why he claims that he has to be anonymous. Absolute crap. I, you're not even allowing any sort of. Uh, Who posts on 4chan? No, no one under chan. no one under 30 even knows what the fuck that is. 8chan. You're, this is a joke. This is a joke. 8. Chan. He's no longer with 4chan. If you 4chan. have any information, you come out in public in reality, not 4chan. Let me tell... Okay. This Let is me, moronic. He, like I said, he claims he works for the Trump administration. I could claim I work for the Trump administration. Okay. But then people would say, oh, that's Dave from the Dave and Shecky show. I know he doesn't work for the Trump administration. He's hey, a drummer. Know, hey, we know that Chuck Barris was fucking a killer. Okay. We know that Chuck Barris worked for the CIA. So let me just say this, even though you're shitting on it again, when I said, please don't shit on anything no, your I bring up. No, picks are great. It's just, uh, look, 4chan, I mean... 8chan. He is now on 8chan. No, QAnon and this rock and roll crazy nights motherfucker. Uh, the loudness guy, what's this, uh, crazy days, crazy nights? What are you talking... Well, what? What? Crazy days, crazy nights. Sounds like, you know, rock and roll crazy oh, nights. Okay. It's fucking... Uh, they're hiding behind the veil of, of bullshit. Anyway, so uh, whatever your feelings aside, Q has a started a movement, a very large movement, to the point where you cannot go and watch a Trump rally without seeing good people of all ages with Q signs, Q t-shirts, um, the people who have invested in Q, there are people on Twitter who will then, like I said, he, he posts somewhat cryptically. Some, sometimes it's vague. Sometimes he uses abbreviations. There are good people on Twitter who work hard to, uh, I don't want to say transcribe, translate, but they, they, they explain, they expound on what his, uh, messages of the day are. And sometimes Q will have, you know, 10 Ten messages he'll he'll tweet or not tweet he'll post. If Q's got any information that's uh, related to a crime and he's withholding information, then that's against the law. I okay. I didn't say that Q was doing that, but you're you're talking about Pizzagate. No, I'm just saying in general. I'm saying more more primarily this guy who's got all this information about the rocker and feeding people cocaine. Oh, this is somebody just, else. He would rather just post this instead of actually solving the case. That's, he knows so much that okay. we couldn't just get to the bottom of it. He wants to be cryptical while some lunatic is out there rocking and rolling still. That's NT Lawyer, and I believe NT he... NT Lawyer. That sounds e -N -T -Y, like a good name. E-N-T-Y, like NT, Entertainment Lawyer. Come on. Give me a real name, dude, or stop doing this. Okay, this we're, is, okay, we're talking is, about I, Q now. It's I, now time for Q. Ugh. We're done with Don Henley. It's on to Q. All right, what can I blame Q for? You can't blame Q for anything uh, right now. So what I'm telling you is this. He, uh, as... He's been called a conspiracy theory theorist, uh, as Lionel, as you heard Lionel say, he's not, uh, and it's, it's put negatively as if he's a bad person, but Q, whether he is real or not, has started a movement. Uh, I would say, 
I would say hundreds of thousands, if not a million plus people online are, I don't say devoted to Q, but they look forward to his posts on 8chan. Um, they look forward to uh, figuring out exactly what he's saying. There are websites out there that have proof that Q is, is right. Q proof. Like Q said this on this day, and then five days later, President Trump said this. So you're saying that it's probably a coincidence, some of this stuff. Yeah. All right. I'm just glad that you're not on the internet because the Q folks take it very personally when someone tries to say that they are being misled. I will say that this. <laughs> Q. Go fuck yourself. All right. I will say this. Uh, Q has, whether he's a, really in the administration or not, he has started something huge. And he has, and I think it's for the greater good, these folks, these great people on the internet who are willing to, to do the work are out there researching stuff, always learning new stuff. A lot of times you'll learn something from somebody who is associated with Q on Twitter weeks before it's in the news. What are weeks. we even talking about? What's an example of what Just we're like, about? Uh, say, uh, Huber, the guy Huber in Utah who is... Uh, putting together uh, grand jury stuff for the um, Peter Stroke, Lisa Page, FBI stuff, mm. a lot of information like that, um, information about uh, uh, human trafficking. That uh, the, See, the, the thing is, is that Q also willingly speaks about stuff that the mainstream media refuses, refuses to report on. And it's stuff that's important to a lot of people. Like, you know, uh, I, how, yes. you can, how can you possibly back up your sources when you don't even admit who you are? This is the worst form of journalism in the world. This is the end of the world as we know it. Q says, you, you, you're supposed to have verified sources. He's not even a verified thing. How can, this is insanity. Absolute insanity to trust a source who won't even reveal himself, much less... Get proof of his sources. Absolutely insane. What is this? It's like Deep Throat 2.0. It's kind of like Deep Throat 2.0. Absolutely ridiculous. He should be found and hung. There are people who are trying to it's, find him, and there are people who claim he is this guy or that guy. Or it, And Q real, has gone dark for a couple weeks at a time. But yeah, Once you go dark, you never go hard. That's not true. So anyway, he is posting... Um, they, they, they all say, where we go one, we go all. Like, I don't they understand. Is this, is this some sort of game? What is this, a Sim City? Like, this is reality. This is the real world. So, what? We're just playing a game? Is this a guessing game? Well, this is the thing. So, Lionel, uh, who you love, right? Professor Lionel, yeah. I love Lionel. Lionel, uh, it's, this is an interesting thing, and I haven't heard it spoken about uh in the Q community, but I will admit that I am, I'm not hanging on Q's every word like a lot of folks are. Um, Lionel went and met President Trump the end of August, mm -hmm. a month ago. The month leading up to his meeting with Mr. Trump, he, he tweeted about Q 59 times, 59 times in the month leading up to his meeting with President Trump. Mm -hmm. The month since his meeting with President Trump, he has tweeted about Q zero times. Well, why doesn't someone ask him about it? He's not anonymous. I feel like, and I, I feel like perhaps, and also uh, he has, Lionel puts out three or four videos a day. He just is... He just is always uh, doing something, tweeting, making videos. And since he's come back from his meeting with President Trump, he has not posted any videos about Q, as far as I could see. Who? Lionel. Lionel. I thought you just said that. Oh, that was tweeted. He hasn't tweeted or done videos. That's correct. Gotcha. So I, uh, I think that's somewhat telling um, maybe you folks who are uh, heavy into Q and QAnon posts uh, will have something to say about that. Why hasn't I, someone asked Lionel? I don't know that anybody has. 
I don't know that anybody's noticed, Is honestly. Is it easier to conspire than just ask? I'm not sure, but I would think that Lionel, as uh, vociferous as he is, would have uh, shouted from the root- rooftops uh, if someone had asked him, but he has been unusually quiet about Q, so perhaps he asked the president, and the president either said, no, there is no Q, it's not real, or he said, we don't want you to speak about it anymore. Yeah, if he said anything, he said it. Said there's no Q. What are you talking about? No, I don't think I don't think uh, Trump would ever say that because I think if I think Trump is aware of Q. I think he's very aware of Q. I think he's very aware of a lot of things that happen because I mean, he has a good the, team why, around him. Tr- it's not part of his Trump's team. No, I don't. I don't. That's what he would have said to Lionel. Whatever is going on has nothing to do with me. I don't know what he would exactly say, but whatever he said has made Lionel not mention it again. So maybe now that we say this, someone will say something to him and Lionel will be like, no, uh, you know, I love Q. I've just been working on other things. It could be. But that was what I found today when I was looking into Q. So you um, you have no sympathy for any of the Q followers? No. I feel like they're doing good work. They are. Uh, they get together. They talk about things. They are uh, keeping themselves informed. Everyone, they are educating themselves on uh, things that are happening that the news isn't covering. And I think that's a big deal. I think that's a very big deal. So even if Q is not really someone who's embedded in the Trump administration, he has started something, uh, I, and they're calling it the Great Awakening. I despise that you can be awoken by someone who has the audacity to not re- reveal themselves or any of their sources. Anything they say could or could not be true. There's no way to back up any of it. Well, like it's I totally said, they have some websites where it says, Q said this and this happened three days later. Yeah. You think it's a coincidence? Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Facts can be bent. Things can be changed. Uh, uh, perspective can lead to conclusion. I don't, I don't believe it. Oh. And I believe it's... He has not tried to make any money from this. So he's a fucking psychotic psychopath with a lot of time on his hands. I don't know that that's true. Fucking in his mom's basement with a shoe stick in his That is such a hack thing to say. It's not even... Exactly. He's in his dad's basement. Not not funny. Zero. Zilch. No laughs. So that's what he deserves. Show yourself. Expose who you are. What is this, a joke? It's a joke. Q got so, uh, people were so interested in Q that mainstream media did come out very strongly to tell us how, how dumb we, people were to follow Q. Now, for me, if the mainstream media is, is bending over backwards to tell you something is bad, it's probably not. They're all bad. All right. If he was good, he would fucking not be Q. He'd be, I mean, he could be Q. He just wouldn't be anon. Maybe one day he won't be a Be a man, you... F- All right. I feel like if Q is embedded in, in the administration, he would want to always be a non. Q, come correct. What the fuck is this? Smoke a joint with Joe Rogan, you fucking homo. All right. Why, would, why Joe Rogan? I don't know. He seems to get a lot of attention. Okay. Well, good for him. All right. So we've talked about three things today. Conspiracies... Unsolved Mysteries, and a Deep Dark Secret. Let me tell you something. Okay. I believe that Don Henley is a creep. Yeah. And, oh, and no. All those, uh, those, you can't, look. I think he it's was, beyond creep. He was arrested. Uh, the fact that they, they stifled the charges and, and put everything under the fucking rug, that's, that's corrupt music business. Yeah. Doesn't mean that Don Henley is any less of a fucking evil person. He is terrible. And that's what you get for being a shitty drummer. Oh, All right. There you go. Not but, on the top 50 list. No. It makes fucking uh, Phil Collins look like uh, Elvin Jones. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. But, I did um, not know. But uh, the second story. What was the second one again? Refer- John Titor. John Titor. That Time one, traveler that from one 2036. That one is a, is a uh, Jew hoax. Jew hoax. Folks. And the third one uh, that we just discussed. QAnon. QAnon. That is really a person or people it could be a group of people who all have the same login that's true but i th- i th- it's written 
I think it's one person. I think it's probably one person. It seems to all be written... Uh, one person, probably... The same, same way. Probably, probably under 30. You know what they say about under 30? No. You can't trust them. I don't know. That's not what they say, but... Can't trust anyone under 30. They said you can't trust anyone over 30. Yes, and now we're over 30, and we know the truth. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I trust people way under 30, um, but... Yeah, you can trust them to fucking log on and start jerking off when you're not looking. Okay. No, I don't trust them for that. Uh, and if Look, I, I went into this... At the beginning, I was like, okay, this is cool. Q is cool. But then he's posted some things that I uh, was. He posted a picture at one point where we were supposed to believe he was on the Air Force One, but uh, someone quickly pointed out that it was a picture of a picture on the internet, and you could even see the back of his iPhone logo in the screen as he took it. Um, there were some other things uh, he did. He reposted some. Someone had said something about Newtown and. Uh, false flag and um, yeah. all this stuff and you know people little kids did die in Newtown uh, they did they did die uh, that one guy who laughed on his way to the microphone I don't know what his deal is he seems like people an asshole laugh all the time people now, laugh when they're uh, upset so people, people yeah but he was the guy was a father of a kid who died in Newtown and on his way to the podium, he was clearly joking with somebody. And it it wasn't even like 24, 48 hours. And he was like laughing on his way to the podium. And then he gets to the podium and he he does a straight face thing. I mean, there there's there's video evidence of that. It's 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 not, you know, it's not doctored in any way. It's so straight from the news. So he's got a poor personality disorder. Yeah, he might be a sociopath. He might be an asshole. He might not really have empathy. Um and doesn't know how to act. Turning the frogs gay, I tell Turn you. Turning the frogs gay. So, but the Q thing... Um, you know, they are turning them gay. That's not a conspiracy. It's actually true. It's actually true. But the Q thing, so at first I was interested, and then there was some posts where I was like, nah. And now, uh, so I kind of walked away from it. But now that I see this Lionel thing, and again, I haven't seen anything about it online, uh, but Lionel, 59 times in the month leading up to his meeting with President Trump, zero times in the month afterwards. So that, to me, is very telling. What it's telling well, of, I'm not sure. Let's see what happens in October. We'll, we'll see. Anyway, um, this has been episode 20. Episode 20 from season one of the Middle-Aged Cool Kids Super Terrific podcast featuring your pals, Dave and Shecky. Uh, if you want to know more about us, head on over to middleagecoolkids.com. Uh, we post our show on BitChute, iTunes, TuneIn, Google Play, uh, YouTube, and Stitcher. Uh, BitChute. We are loving. I am personally loving BitChute. Um, we're starting to get subscribers there as well. Also, um, I don't like YouTube. I hate to tell you. You don't like YouTube? Yeah, I mean, I got. I'm forced to watch it because there's a lot of stuff on it. But I don't like that half the comedians I want to watch are banned on YouTube. Well, what you is know that? where they're not banned on BitChute. Yeah, they're not banned on Shitboot either. But I just haven't come up with that one yet. You keep on saying shit boot. I'm telling you, this is something. And I'm never going to laugh at it. It can happen. All right. Anyway, BitChute, we are, uh, we do contribute. We're a $5 a month uh, account holder. Uh, one day, if we get more money, we will go up to the $10 a month. But right now, 5 bucks is, is what we got. Uh, I recommend you also getting the $5 a month. Help them out. Um, we're also on... Twitter, or I'm on Twitter, at Middle Aged Cool. Dave um, is not on Twitter. But you can, uh, if you want to yell at him about Q, do it in the bit shoot or the YouTube comments. Don't tweet it at me. Um, I, I just, <laughs> I'm not the same as him. Usually I say, go ahead, send me something. Well, I'm for just Dave. saying. No, the Q folks have are. Have you ever heard of verified sources? Yeah, but he's... Is, is that Dave, part of a, of a report? Journalism? Let me tell you something. Is he a journalist? 
No, I well, told people you. People are thinking he, they're treating him as a journalist. They're treating him as an information source. What's the difference between that and a journalist? Well, when you're a journalist, you go to information sources to write your story. When you're a journalist, you have standards. He is, uh, they're looking at him as someone within the administration who is leaking information to them so they keep up the hope. What if I were to tell you it was Roman Polanski? That would be disgusting, and it's not Roman Polanski. It could be. Unless he tells me it's not, I'm going to believe it's Roman Polanski. Look at this most recent post here. Q Polanski. Here's a recent post. Someone said, uh, Q, our son, is shipping <laughs> off to USMC, USMC recruit training soon. Wait, what's happening? Somebody on 8chan said to Q, our son is shipping USMC recruit training soon. Yeah. Proud for him to serve. So this is somebody who is probably our age, maybe a little younger, with a son who is going to the Marine Corps, yeah. who believes in Q wholeheartedly, and so much so wanted to tell Q that their kid is right. shipping off to the Marines. Okay. And Q says, we thank him for his service to this country. May God watch over him always. God bless, Patriot. Where we go one, we go all Q. Oh, Q. So I, I feel like if Q is not what he says he is, he has created something that is bigger than him. And um, wherever he's doing his research and 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 putting dropping little crumbs of information for these other folks to to do a lot of uh, research and educating themselves on, I I think at the end well, I, at the end it's still great. He's what do still these people who are into Q know that I don't know. Well, Dave, you don't. They they know stuff about Jeff Sessions. They know stuff about what about him? Peter Stroke. What do you need to know about Jeff Sessions? They know stuff about Lisa Page. They know stuff about Hillary Clinton's emails. I mean, I when Wikipedia published all those uh, Podesta emails, I didn't see you reading everyone like I did. These motherfuckers get, get, get a hobby. All right. Anyway, can you, can you, I got I got a, a fucking Donald Fagan tune to learn. Okay. See. So this is this is uh, Q folks, good Q folks out there. Uh, I know you get angry when people are so dismissive, and I totally understand. What 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 about Jeff Sessions? What do you need to know? He's a little weasel from Alabama who hates fucking weed. All right. Fuck Jeff Sessions. He's fucking antiquated. All right. That dude is is uh, uh, fuck him. Fuck half of Trump's goddamn people. I like Trump, but half the people he's got in there can go fuck themselves. Anyway, uh, this has been episode 20, and we will be back next week for episode 21. Stay cool, America. Gar. <laughs>